Sofego was the next artist on the come up and seemed to be the face of the new SoundCloud era. But now with a disappointing album and going MIA with the rise of his career, it seems that Sofego has fallen off the map. Stage Fighter! Step into the ring. Choose your fighter. Playboy Cardi. Little Uzi Vert. Destroy Lonely So Fago. You've chosen So Fago. Fight! Sofago's music started gaining traction in 2019 and early 2020. His music was completely different from his competitors in the underground rap scene. With his buzzy, raw, and hyper-energetic subgenre of hip-hop, Sofago has been known as the creator of a new music genre that dominated the year of 2021, called Rage. Sofago had 2021 in a chokehold, Knock Knock being the biggest song on TikTok, getting a Lyrical Lemonade video, and getting signed to Travis Scott's label Cactus Jack. Everything was perfect, he was the next big thing and many people compared him as this generation's little Uzi Vert. Artists like Trippy Red and Playboy Cardi being the main front of promoting and dominating this genre, and even arguably having the biggest rap song of 2021 with Miss The Rage. I can't see a damn thing, thing. And with the rise of Rage, Trippy Red went to release a full Rage album called Trip At Night. This had artists like Juice World, Ski Mask, Triple X, Lil Uzi, Playboy Cardi, Polo G, Lil Durk, and even Drake all over Rage Beats. But yet, the first featured artist on the project was Sofago. So while Sofago's genre was peaking and was starting to get mainstream attention, his debut album wasn't getting released. Why? Well, this could have been because of his label Cactus Jack and how previous years they haven't been able to contain rising artists like Sheck West or Smoke Perp, but it could also be that Fago put his music to the side once he gained fame. You start getting all that attention and money and think you can just sit around and let any music be anticipated from a long span of time. And while this is a case for a lot of artists, we don't see this for musicians early in their career. Successful artists capitalize on their music to grow their following and recognition early in their music career, so later they can sit back and enjoy themselves. But Fago wasn't on that level yet. He wasn't a Playboy Cardi, Frank Ocean, or even a Kendrick Lamar that could just wait. And that's what had people turning on him. And by the end of 2021, there was no album to be seen, and Rage music was dying out and evolving. And while music is always evolving, I think a big part of the reason why Rage music evolved so early was due to Playboy Cardi's whole lot of rap. And while most people didn't enjoy the project at first, including myself, ass, it's ass. Playboy Cardi's ass. <laughs> This album turned out to be a revolutionary, genre-bending project that changed rage and rap music and inspired a new generation of rappers. Cardi's rage music was a mixture of electronic, punk, and rap music. And while this sound was dominating the underground scene, Cardi went on to create his own label called Both Music. Artists like Ken Carson and Destroy Lonely were instantly put in the spotlight. Rappers that are complete Cardi clones with different characteristics that set them apart. With Cardi never being the spotlight, this had his cult following of a fan base become hungry for new music. Listening to artists in Opium was a way that fans could be entertained, and with this, the artists started to make a cult following of their own. So with the obsession of Opium, what if? What if So Fago wasn't signed to Cactus Jack, but was signed to Opium to fit the music style he originally created? And while I do think artists like Destroy Lonely, Ken Carson, and Homicide Gang wouldn't get the attention if they weren't signed, wouldn't this boost So Fago even more? But Fago doesn't even fit the OPM image! That's the point. The little Uzi comparison and Uzi being tied in the same fan base as Playboy Cardi, wouldn't so Fago bring a bit of a light to the group and a different energy? Cause one thing these artists have in common is the aesthetic that they bring with their rare grunge look. But even if Fago remained the same or changed his style, he would easily be the second biggest artist in the group. And he would have collabs like So Fago and Ken Carson that would feel a bit of an underground version of Playboy Party and Little Uzi Vert if they were raised. Part of the reason Fago got so much hate is for the fact that he was always in the spotlight. Nike commercials, interviews, appearing on Aiden Ross's stream. He was doing so many things at once, but wasn't dropping music. So where am I going with this? 
Well, it's the fact that if he was signed to opium, he could wait and anticipate bigger things from not talking. Take this for example, Fago goes and drops a small project in mid-2021, then goes on tour with Playboy Cardi. Headliners have this being a highly anticipated tour, and when it comes down to it actually happening, Fago only shows up for 7 of the shows. Whole rap scene is going to be saying, where's Fago? Fago's missing. He won't be posting on Instagram, not tweeting, not Snapchatting. His whole social media will be gone and confiscated by Playboy Cardi. Give me a phone, Faye. Fago, hyphen a press. B, yeah, I'll be on <laughs> Cardi. He decides not to open social media till the end of 2021 or early 2022. Then he starts teasing a few songs, then disappears. Ken Carson, Destroy Lonely, Homicide Gang release their albums, and finally, at the end of 2022, near Christmas, So Fago pops up on social media, tweeting out that his project might be coming, then it finally drops. Now this is definitely some alternate universe type shit, and this is definitely just a what if, and I'm not saying Sofigo needed opium to have a successful music career, all he had to do was drop. So let's say Cactus Jack is the reason he couldn't drop. He had the whole underground scene biting and experimenting off the sound. People like Can Can, Koshai's, DC The Dawn, The Holiday, Young Fazo, and while those artists are doing well, Sofigo has always had the edge and it was a bigger artist even without dropping. But there was one artist that was on the rise during the same time as Fago. He had the rage element to his music, but the only difference was he took the advantage of the opportunity that Sofago had. Two years ago, they were both highly compared in the underground scene. But now this artist in two years has managed to be the 41th most streamed artist last year. One number under Ariana Grande. And this artist is still considered to be underground. He has completely dominated the charts and has the most trending sounds on TikTok ever. Yeet is everything Sofago was supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah.